Starting the season in Luso in Portugal, beautiful surroundings, temperate climate and uh, a friendly population. And the course, always one for a high standard and a great place to start off this year's championship. In the 125 class, world champion Sylvain Piteri picks up where he left off last season with victory on day one in class. But it, uh, Italy's uh, Giorgio Grasso uh, fights back in top form and he is going to be a very likely championship contender. Giovanni Sala, 250 class world champion, leading the event on day one. but. Uh, the determined efforts of Englishman Paul Edmondson to catch him underline the fact that he's going to have a tough year. Shane Watts has come up from down under to take on the best that the world has to offer. He has won everything that's worth winning in Australia and has come to Europe to show his mettle. Amanda Eriksson, the reigning 400cc world champion, won the title by one point. So there's going to be an all-out battle between him and this man, Mario Rinaldi of Italy. But in uh, the, the second day of this event, Rinaldi injures his foot, which will rather hamper his progress. Frenchman Christian Boulet ends up surprising everybody by taking victory in the 350 class. And in the big four-stroke class, Kali Tainan has run out of serious opposition. Runner-up Kachinak couldn't keep up with him this year. Day two, and Giorgio Grasso riding on to victory on these high-speed, fast-flowing stages in the 125s. Paul Edmondson, second in the 250 class on day one, third on day two. And Giovanni Sala, the champion, forced to settle for second place overall on day two. And the big mover, the big shaker is Shane Watts from Australia wins the 250 class and the established favourites starting to look very strongly at this young man from Australia. Christian Boulet making big waves in the 400 class. Fastest on day one and on the second day despite this crash manages to come in second quickest as well and that is enough to hold on to the overall first position. World champ Anders Eriksson takes the fastest time on day two, but not enough to take the overall lead. And Kali Tainan, unchallenged in the 500 fours, and on both days, fastest. So after round one, Grasso, Sala, Boulay and Tainan are the leaders. Staying where the weather is warmest early on in the season, round two, Vigo in Spain, and this will prove to be the toughest event of the year. Not on the eye, but on the riders and on the machinery. Grueling trial sections, very tough time limits on stages as well, and you can see how much the riders are going to struggle. Many of them ran out of time early on the stages, trying to uh, make up time on these very tricky stages. And among the Riders injured on falls on the uh, first day. The world champion in the 125 class, Sylvain. And anybody who makes it to the end of this stage certainly knows that they have done a superb job. Not just in terms of uh, the rider's ability, but uh, the preparation of the bike to get them to the top of the slope. In the 125 class, Giorgio Grasso takes victory not only on the first day, but also on the second. Reinforcing his position as favourite. Paul Edmondson has spent a lot of winter practice time in Spain and is also competing in the Spanish Nationals and so he feels right at home in these conditions. Wins his class on both days, taking the lead in the 250 Championship. And having started his career as a trials rider, no wonder he makes this look uh, far easier than it really is. So what of the Aussie? Well, he's doing superbly as well. Shane Watts comes in third and then second on day one and day two. 
maintaining his very impressive run of form among the world leaders in the 250 class. And Giovanni Sala from Italy, well, he manages to take second and then third place on the two days. But uh, at the end of his four days of competition, the results show that he is not able to dominate the field the way he has done in the last couple of years. In the 400 class, Anders Ericsson takes victory on day one, but on day two, falls into a crevice and ends up only seventh. His main rival, Rinaldi, does his best despite an injury, manages to come in sixth, but that's not enough to turn the tables in his favour. Christian Boulay, meanwhile, maintains his lead by riding with consistency second and third places on the two stages. And in the Big Bang of 400s, the 504 class, again, Gary Tynan comes in first as expected. Four wins in the four legs so far. And so, after two rounds of the championship, still Grasso leads the 125s. Edmondson moves ahead in the 250s. Boulay and Tynan retain their overall lead. Again, staying as close to the sunny Mediterranean as we can, moving to Moriac in France for the third round of the championship. And as expected from the previous years, deep, deep mud, making constant rerouting the competitors an absolute necessity. And with uh, a little bit of a lottery, Giorgio Grasso suffering his first setback. Technical problems with the machinery, preventing him from coming in higher than fifth. Still maintaining his first overall placing on the championship table. But fellow Italian Fausto Scovolo is able to move up within three points. Giovanni Sala takes first on day one, but on day two he suffers one of the worst crashes of his career. Finishes only sixth overall, and this forces him to relinquish his lead in the table to Edmondson. Mario Rinaldi has more or less recovered from his injury. In the first round and this weekend, he and Ericsson both end up taking a first and a second apiece. Caddy Tynan is forced to drop out for the day, the first time ever in his career. So Peter Janssen takes victories on both days in the 500. And that moves Janssen closer to the 500 leader. But as you can see, the other championship positions exactly as so. So round four, Bobbio in Italy. Dry rocky paths and fast cross-country tests make up the going for this fourth round of the World Enduro Championship. And uh, a new name really coming to prominence in the 125s, Italian Fausto Scorbola. scorbola has been around for years and has competed on and off in several world championships, but this looks like his breakthrough year. Uh, the first day of victory for him, uh, plus an ignition problem on Grasso's machine, propels Scovolo into the lead of the championship. Paul Edmondson in the 250s is only able to go third and sixth despite superb performance from him. And he is absolutely disappointed and very surprised indeed that Italy, as he says, is so different from the Spanish stages. And that drops him out of the overall championship lead. Giovanni Sala, riding on home turf, wins the stages on both days and wins back the number one position in the table ahead of his British rival. Anders Eriksson initially third, but Husqvarna has teammate uh, Arnaldi Nicoli slow down, a tactic that gives him two additional points, putting the Swede up into second, and those could prove to be absolutely critical come the end of the season. Mario Rinaldi takes victory, though, on day one in the class. On day two, though, the situation is reversed and Ericsson beats Rinaldi into second place. He's seven points behind in the ta table now after that uh, injury at the beginning of the year. In the 504s, Fabio Farioli is back riding again for the first time since a spinal column injury sustained in a race in Bologna last year left him almost completely crippled. He is still Slightly restricted in movement, but uh, you wouldn't know it from his performance on the bike, winning his class on day two. And Kelly Knight Tynan uh, winning on day one despite a severe case of stomach flu, very nasty on the bike. And on day two, he comes in behind Fadioli and Janssen, just adding a couple extra points to his position out front in class. Peter Janssen has been running very strongly throughout the French event and here in Italy and goes on to take second place on both days. Tynan's lead, 10 points only in the table. 
but it is unlikely that uh, Janssen will be able to catch the fin unless something extraordinary happens. So Scovolo now leads in the 125s and Sala in the 250s. Moving across into Slovakia for round five, Kozice in Slovakia, the beautiful city, the home close to the border with the Ukraine. And although day one, as you can see, is very dry, day two will be wet and muddy. In the 125 class, Roman Michalek takes victory on both days, establishing himself firmly in second position in the table. Vazdo Skovolo has to settle for second both days, but he still manages to keep his overall lead. In part, at least, thanks to the fact that Giorgio Grasso can ma manage no better than fifth. At the start of the season, nobody would have guessed that state of affairs. Paul Edmondson wins his category on both days, beating Sala by a large margin, and that championship is seesawing all over the place. Edmondson seems to be getting better and better as the season progresses, and his third world championship title looks to be a possibility. Sala crashes on day one, only coming in eighth, and on day two in sixth, Edmondson leaving him behind a 15-point margin now separating them, and it's going to be tough for the Italian to check his progress. Shane Watts, second on day one, but mud is not one of his strong points, and on day two he has a harder time of it, coming in third. Mario Rinaldi just one point behind the table and looking to close the gap, but Anders Eriksson's not willing to cooperate, and he increases his lead to seven points. It's all still wide open in the 400s. Last season's runner-up in the 500s, Yaroslav Kachanak was uh, forced to sit this season out for lack of a proper sponsor and he's just riding in this round purely for the enjoyment on his uh, most local round taking victory on both days Peter Janssen can't do better than fifth on either day but that's not so big a problem because Kali Tainan is out due to illness and all of a sudden the Swede moves up into first in the table with a 12 point lead and as long as he doesn't blow it and crack under pressure he could now win that 500 championship so Scovolo, Edmondson now leads the 250s again, Eriksson and Janssen, the two Swedes leading the big four-pot classes, four-stroke classes. And so, to the sixth and final round in Berg in Germany. Now, no real technical problems in the course. And Fausto Scovolo playing it safe in the 1-2-5s, the so second and fourth are good enough for him to clinch the 1996 World 125cc Championship. Second in the, the series goes to Czech Roman Michelet, riding on an Italian license. And in the 250 class, Paul Edmondson is playing it very safe as well. No chances. Third and fourth are good enough for him to take his third World Championship title. And to think that some had already written him off after he got the cold shoulder from Husqvarna and switched to the gas gas setup. Giovanni Sala, well, he's a little bit out of the running here on both days. Leaving Edmondson to rob home without any problems. And the Italian manages to take second behind uh, a new shooting star, Francis Eric Bernard. Sala not only loses his title, but it's been made uh, fairly obvious to him that there are a lot of new stars on the horizon that will make regaining it next year harder than ever. Australia's Shane Watts comes in a strong third in the 250 class of the 1996 World Championship and declares that he won't be settling for anything less than that next year. Fourth overall goes to Eric Bernard. And here's a man to be taken seriously as well. Mario Rinaldi in the 400s comes first on both days, but Anders Eriksson comes second, which is enough to make the title his. And for the second year in a row, Super Mario, as his friends call him, comes up just one point short of winning the World Championship title. What does Rinaldi have to do? Well, Anders Eriksson takes his second World Championship title in the 400 class. That is signed, sealed and delivered. If the Swede's doing well, Finn Karitainen has been having a tough time since the French round. Problems with the bike and with illness, robbing him of a good chance of the title. And it's just not his year. Peter Janssen riding his Husseberg on his way to his first World Championship title. And in the 
0.25 in the 500 class. Two riders who started the season as underdogs have ratcheted up as world champions. Here are the final standings. Fausto Scovolo wins the 125s. Paul Edmondson from Great Britain, the 250s. Anders Ericsson from Sweden, the 350s. And Peter Janssen, the Swede, the 500s. We'll be back.